Welcome to this Excel tutorial. This is a, another little quick data visualization tip. Um, even though Excel now has some pretty amazing uh, conditional formatting options that allow you to use things such as data bars and color scales, I still am never particularly happy with how some of those things come out. So I, I like to refer back to the old method of creating in-cell charts using the repeat function. So firstly, I just want to get some data. So I'm going to use a function called ran between. And I'm going to ask it to give me a number somewhere between negative 50 and 50. And so if I just copy that down, here we see uh, eight or so different individuals, all with a score somewhere between 50 and negative 50. And that ran between function is great because um, A, it saves you time, but B, if you press F9, it reevaluates it and gives a new number. So if you're testing data out, it can show you that things are working as they should. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is over in columns E and F, just to give myself some space, I'm going to use the repeat function. So REPT, what do I want to repeat? I have to put this in quotes. It is a vertical pipe. So depending on your keyboard, it'll be somewhere just above the enter key. Um, but you might have to look around depending on what your keyboard's got. And I want to repeat it this number of times. And so what happens is it effectively just repeats that pipe 44 times. With the font that I've currently got, it doesn't look that fantastic, but we'll fix that in a second. Another problem that I've got, which I will fix shortly, is it can't do a negative number. So I'm just going to put an if equation in front of this. If that is greater than 0. Copy that down. And I'm going to repeat the formula here equals if that is less than 0. Now I want to repeat the pipe, excuse me, the pipe by the absolute value of that number. And I'll show you what that will provide us in a second. Just complete that formula off. That'll pretty much give me a line going the other way. So the first thing I want to do is fix the font because it's already driving me crazy. There's a whole list of fonts here in Excel 2010 and you could look all day and probably find something that would look good, but I know one that looks pretty good and it's called Playbill. And what it does is it puts the bars so close together that it looks like a solid line. And I like that. So I want this one left justified. I want this one right justified and I'm going to change the font to red. So now what we've got is red numbers uh, going left from a median axis and positive numbers going right from the axis. And I'll tidy this up even further. Uh, what will I do? A little grey background, something like that would be great. Put a border in there. <coughs> thick black. So if I continue to evaluate this, it's just a neat little graphic that can provide a, a good way for you to be much more in control of how your in-cell charts look rather than using conditional formatting. Now there's another way to use that repeat function to produce a little graph. Sometimes you get numbers that uh, don't suit this. For example, if our score was 150, what would happen is that our NCR chart would go halfway across the page, and we don't really want that. But there's a way around it. 
I'll show you in just a second. The first thing I want to do is do the positive one, excuse me, equals if this number is greater than zero, then I want to repeat. I'm not going to do the pipe this time. I'm going to do a dash. But what I'm also going to do is put a character on the end. I need to put that in quotes, obviously. So what that's saying is, if the number is greater than zero, repeat the dash, and then put a zero after the final dash. So if I hit enter now, we won't get an answer because the number is actually negative, but if I copy it down, one of them will work for us. As you can see, there's a little line with a dot on the end. It kind of looks like an arrow. Now, if I scoop that formula up, and just edit it a little bit. I'll need to put my circle, or my O, at the beginning rather than at the end. And drag that down. Forgot to make that an absolute value. Bit of a schoolboy error there. Okay, so the same as before, I want that one to be right justified with a red font. I want this one to be left justified, which it should be by default anyway. I might just make them jump out a little bit more by making them bold. And I will, like before, see if that's even make that gray so last little step I'll put the the bold border in just to be consistent so what I would um, do like I mentioned before if, if I had numbers which were much larger you get some stuff that really gets crazy and out of hand. I'll just move this down so that it doesn't interfere with the other one. Is you can do a little bit of a modification to the formula. Instead of doing just the number, you might divide it by 25, for example. And that just makes everything a little bit shorter. So you just get a consistent scale that allows you to cope with whatever your, your scale is. So might refine that to 10 just to get exactly the right size for my data. So there you go, in cell charts, two ways to make uh, a little small graphic, particularly for use in things like dashboards. Um, if you want a copy of the spreadsheet, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you for my next trick.